Just before we jump into the time lapse, I do want to announce that the new course, Master Procedural Texturing in Blender, which I collaborated with CG Masters on, has now been released. Currently 25% off, there's a lot of good content in here. I produced all of the shaders and it's being taught by Chris. He's an amazing teacher. So I do hope you'll enjoy it. Have a look at the product page. I've linked it down below and I've also linked to the demo video that just goes into a little bit more demonstration about some of these different shaders and how they can be used. The initial release has these two main shaders, the animated lava and the subway tiles. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's jump into the time lapse. After the flower shop, I really wanted to do something that was like not simple, but certainly a little bit less of a marathon. <laughs> I wanted to have a little bit of a a little bit of a breather before doing the next big one. I wanted to go for this sort of endless bloom flower, and I had a fairly good idea of how I would do it. I know a lot of times people use the phyllotaxis and sort of do some math trickery to make it loop around, but the Taurus node in my toolkit actually has a a phase offset so that you can rotate it. Sort of through itself. So I wanted to take advantage of that and use that to essentially manipulate the petals, make them loop around. I also knew that there was the, uh, the the factor outputs, so the one which goes zero to one around the minor radius. We could use this then to control. There's a little bit of extra math done just to make sure that the, like the twist and the rotation and everything in the torus to make sure that that is being corrected in the factor. But then we can just use that factor directly for controlling actually a lot of stuff. So it controls the scale of the petals, it controls the rotation of the petals. And then after the instancing, we're also transferring it across the petals directly so that we can bend and uh, distort them directly on the petal vertices themselves so that we have unique distortions per petal. It's also being transferred across to the petals and then to another point distribute, which is being used to generate the frost. So the frost is really, really, really simple. It's just an icosphere that I've made spiky by uh, by capturing the position and then subdividing it. And then I can calculate the distance between the original positions and the new positions. And wherever that is zero, it's basically where we have the original vertices and we can just scale those out. So you end up with this, just basically a little spiky ball. I used uh, a little bit of a Z offset on it. For a start, I wanted it to make it look like it was sat on the surface, but it also means that as this scales, because the frost, it becomes denser, as you come down through that V factor, just to make sure that it's as if the petals are becoming more frosty, but it also scales up, which means that that Z offset becomes more extreme. And this is actually a really nice way to give the appearance of frost crystals kind of growing and propagating on top of one another. It's quite an interesting effect, but yeah, super simple to make. I did have the trouble that you have to use such a high distribution density that it was just, it was very slow to run, but it worked out all right. I think I had it set to something like 50 million or 500 million. The flower is made to more or less real size as well. So granted it is quite small, but that number was just very high. It did make things take a little while to compute. I also did a little bit of work on shaders. I didn't take them too far, but I, I wanted to experiment with the subsurface. I was having a chat with Sharon from Just 3D Things, and we were looking at how there's some new subsurface scattering options on the principal BSDF node, things like subsurface anisotropy and the IOR values, as well as a new random walk fixed radius. So you'll notice as well that the, uh, the flowers in the background are more pink. And this is a bit of an odd one. This is actually, I think, a little bit of a shader error. I do need to find out whether or not it's a bug or something that I've done, but they are all using the same shader but the ones in the background seem to have like a, a bit of a broken subsurface scatter. So I do need to just find out what's going on with them. To get the appearance that it almost looks like veins underneath the surface. So I was using a cube to make the petals and just distort it. However, we have done, you know, every time we've made stuff on this channel with geometry nodes, just using like the flow curve and squeezing stuff together to get different shapes. So I used a cube instead of a grid because I wanted to have the thickness, which would allow me to get proper subsurface scattering. But then in the shader, I made sure that I was having this sort of vein pattern beneath the surface in the subsurface scattering. And you can do this essentially by controlling the subsurface radius. And I actually also put it through the color to have different radius at different points. So it basically makes it look as if 
the light has hit something that is a little bit denser beneath the surface, such as a vein underneath the surface of the petal. And if you have a lower radius at that point, then it will appear darker and kind of cause some internal shadowing. Subsurface scattering is really important in proper materials. Basically all materials, you look anywhere in your room, even hard stuff like wood and plastic will to a certain degree have light scattering beneath the surface because things in reality aren't just an outer shell like we model them. Things are made of, of solid continuous material. So that's really all there is to it. This is a genuinely quite a simple setup. We're just looking at taking petals, instancing them on a torus that we are sort of rotating through itself, chucking on a few materials and making the icosphere instance for the frost that we just bring out as it goes through that motion. Nice and easy. Add a little bit of depth of field at the end and you're golden.